This is Twit. Living off the land. Uh, this is just my favorite term. I, really, when bad guys gain some source of presence on a system, no matter how that may initially have happened, they then typically need some means of doing something, right, once they're there. Either they need to arrange to obtain the tools they will need from some remote hosting server, or they need to use and abuse what's already present where they are. Uh, the, the term, which I, I said I really love, that the security industry has coined for the latter is known as living off the land, meaning using what use what you got uh, wherever you are. Uh, cleverly reusing an environment's existing crop of utilities to get up to some mischief. The living off the land phrase has been shortened to LOL, and thus <laughs> these already present, yeah, I know, I know, and thus these already present binaries, when used in this fashion, are known as LOL bins, uh, and you know, phrased and written as a single word. The obvious advantage to reusing a system's existing LOL bins for nefarious purposes is that they're already there. They're trusted by the system. They probably have the rights that they need. And they're approved for use by whatever anti-malware might be watching over the environment, you know, trying to see what mischief is going on. So, you know, going out and grabbing something remotely incurs the risk of tripping an alarm when something new is pulled across the environment's network. And in tightly locked down environments, application whitelisting might prevent an OS from running code that hasn't been signed with a valid digital certificate. In such environments, LOL bins that have already been approved for use are often able to, for example, open and run untrusted and unsigned utilities. You know, they're trusted, so the presumption is anybody using them is trusted, and so they should have greater rights. I recently encountered an analysis assembled by the security firm Uptix, which is spelled U-P-T-Y-C-S, Uptix, um, of the most commonly used LOL bins, actually the top five, uh, which they have seen employed to, to further subvert each of the top five for Windows, top five for, five for Linux, and the top five for Mac OS. Uh, in Windows, the well-known Reg Server 32 XE and the Run DLL 32 XE utilities recently experienced spiking levels of abuse, uh, with both being used extensively by the QBot and the ICED ID backdoor malware over the course of the last year. Similarly, bizarre as it might seem, the Loci and Agent Tesla spyware samples have been caught exploiting a vulnerability in Microsoft's Equation Editor, uh, eqnedt32.exe. And of course, the more power Microsoft has added to PowerShell over time, the more ways bad guys are finding to abuse it. So, Uptick's top five LOL bins for Microsoft, for, I'm sorry, for Windows, in order of descending popularity are number one top is PowerShell. Because, boy, if you get a hold of that, you can do a lot of damage. Then we have MSHTA, Reg Server 32, WMIC, and that equation editor. Of course, so now we have PowerShell being a nearly perfect tool for adversaries looking to compromise a system. It provides them with access to various Windows features, which can be abused for downloading payloads, disabling Microsoft Defender and firewalls, executing fileless malware out of RAM, and so on. So, yeah, you really want to keep PowerShell out of the bad guy's hands if possible. MSHTA is the Windows utility that executes Microsoft's HTML applications with the file extension, you know, .hta, 
or JavaScript and VBScript files. Adversaries are able to leverage MS, MSHTA exe for proxy execution, that is execution on their behalf, of malicious .hta files, JavaScript, and VBScript. The infamous TrickBot malware, which we'll be hearing a lot about uh, this hour, often used uh, as a first stage loader for ransomware and other payloads, has been leveraging MSHTA for the past year. So it is in active exploitation. Reg Server 32 num is in third place, a Windows built-in utility. Uh, anyone who's done like serious work with Windows has probably been asked to like use Reg Server 32 to register a DLL with the system that then makes it available globally uh, for other things to use. Anyway, it's a built-in utility that can be used to register and unregister service DLLs. Adversaries are able to abuse it to download scripts hosted on remote servers and execute it in memory. Both the Drydex and TrickBot malware families have used Reg32 uh, to facilitate their infection routines. WMIC is part of the Windows management instrumentation. Uh, you know, the WMI system. D WMIC is a command ec uh, executive for WMI. Like PowerShell, it's quite powerful and has comprehensive features that provide a handy set of capabilities for accessing local or remote Windows system components. Once again, the Drydex malware leverages WMIC to execute run32 run run DLL 32 in the execution phase of its attack life cycle but adversaries may also abuse WMIC to and I always want to say K E Y M O U S E but me yeah, too no. <laughs> <laughs> to achieve execution discovery and lateral movement uh, inside of networks and as I mentioned that but again, really odd. I think it was only five percent uh, in their in their top five, but it was it made it into the top five? Microsoft's Equation Editor, EQNEDT32.exe. It turns out that it is being used by Agent Tesla and the Loci malware to execute their arbitrary code. So there's a flaw in there somewhere that they're able to leverage. And of course, it's not just Windows that has plenty of LOL bins. Over on the Linux side, Uptick's top five LOL bins are Chatter, WGET, uh, uh, Set FACL, CronTab, <laughs> and RM, which I got a kick out of. The this Chatter function, C A, uh, as in change attribute, C A. C H A T T R in Linux is used to set and unset file attributes. Adversaries use this for changing the permissions of the file system files or to make their dropped files immutable to prevent user from users from deleting them. Uh, the self-propagating Kinsing malware uses this change attribute to change the permissions of SSH keys and password files in the defense evasion phase of its attack lifecycle. Linux's wget function is or command is so handy that I always have a Windows binary of it available. Uh, for my own command line use. It's just too handy to be without. Unfortunately, the bad guys agree. They use it, as I do, as a no-nonsense means for quickly downloading files from across the internet. Malware families like the Mirai botnet use wget extensively to download the second stage of its malware. Linux's set FACL uh, ACL, as in access control list, is used, as you'd expect, to set, modify, or remove the access control lists, which are used to control access to regular files and directories. Once again, the Kinsing malware, that seems to be all about permissions, uses set FACL, FACL uh, to set executable permission 
on on Bin Ch mod in the ev- in the defense evasion phase of its attack life cycle. And I wondering I didn't dig into it any deeper, but you know Ch mod certainly already has its executable bit set because it's a it's a command. So maybe. Maybe the normal ch mod, the real one, resides in a different executable directory, not un, not underneath slash bin, and so this thing is putting, it is naming itself ch mod and sticking itself under slash bin, and then using set facl to turn on the executable permission bit in order to be runnable, and of course. The ever-handy set-it-and-forget-it crontab command easily opens the cron table for editing the list of tasks to be scheduled to run at specified times and intervals on the system. You know, it's very much like Windows Scheduler. It's sort of the same thing. Many a malware has arranged to come back from the dead through the clever manipulation of crontab's time-delayed command execution. In particular, cryptocurrency uh, miners have been seen accessing cron t- cron entries to delete already installed cron jobs, meaning get rid of the competition, and to install new cron jobs to keep themselves running. And nothing says erase your own footsteps like RM, Linux's short and sweet file removal command. Many malware families, including the Mirai and, and Gaffet, IoT botnets, as well as many cryptocurrency miners, depend upon RM to self-destruct and delete their tracks. Of course, the most classic of all hacker tricks is to delete the log files, uh, which Linux and Unix systems are famous for creating. And the Mac OS is not without its handy tools being abused by malware. Uptix lists the Mac's top five LOL bins as OpenSSL, curl, SQLite, kill all, and F unzip, being the original SSL and TLS development and testing platform, which we've talked about often. OpenSSL is literally the Swiss Army knife of security and certificate management and manipulation. I had the occasion to use it just the other day on one of my free BSD Unix servers, uh, the, the new one that I was setting up to host our GitLab instance. I needed to check that the new certificate chain I had installed was working correctly. I didn't feel comfortable placing GRC's wildcard certificate on a new and not yet trusted server. If that were to ever get loose, that certificate, it would allow someone, anyone, to spoof any GRC.com subdomain. Not good. So instead, I asked Digicert to make a certificate that would only be valid for the domain dev.grc.com. There's nothing else like OpenSSL for dumping and diagnosing secure connection setup. Unfortunately, like any powerful tool, it can be just as powerful when in the hands of someone malicious. On macOS, the Schleyer malware often leverages OpenSSL in conjunction with Base64, using both to encode deco- and decode malware, uh, also to encrypt, malware to hide it from detection. We've talked about the clever abuse of the curl command several times in the past. Being a long-standing command line tool used for transferring data using various network protocols, and that's really where it shines, um, curl is much like wget, although wget being short for webget has more of a web orientation and is able to do things like follow redirection change uh, chains, which is beyond curl. That said, curl is insanely more versatile with its protocol support. It can be used to obtain data from servers that are offering the the DICT file protocols, FTP, FTPS, of course for 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 SSL or TLS. Gopher, 
Gopher S, HTTP, HTTPS, IMAP, IMAP S, LDAP, LDAP S, MQTT, POP3, and POP3 S, RTMP, RTMPS, RTSP, SCP, SFTP, SMB, SMBS, SMTP, SMTPS, Telnet, or FTP. In other words, pretty much anything you can imagine you're able to use curl against. And of interest to the bad guys, unfortunately, curl is designed to work without user interaction. So it's perfect for malicious scripting and remote unattended use. So curl remains the go-to command for many users and scripts. On Mac OS, it's also a favorite of the Bunglore malware, which leverages curl to download payloads while it's busy setting up shop on a new machine. SQ Lite, I was sort of surprised to see that. That was number three for Mac OS of, of the top LOL bins. Of course, SQLite is a transactional SQL database engine present in Mac OS and increasingly in other OSs as well. I've got it on a bunch of mine. Uh, for example, I, I, I guess I'm using Postgres on the on the uh, on the new uh, FreeBSD machine. But anyway, uh, it's often used to create databases that can be transported across machines. The Mac OS, again, Bunglore malware, uses SQLite to retrieve the history of downloaded files from the Internet in the exfiltration phase of its attack life cycle. And actually, they probably mean the the history of, of exfiltrated, you know, like uploaded files. Fourth on the list for Mac OS is Kill All. A handy utility also found on many Unix and Unix-like systems. I, I use it when newsreading clients connect to GRC's newsgroup server. In typical Unix style, a new instance of a single client server is forked for each connected client. So you end up with just a gazillion little processes, you know, all running, each one talking to one persistent user of the newsgroup server. And there have been many times when I have needed everyone to obtain an updated copy of some filter code, which requires all instances of this client, you know, typically hundreds of them, uh, because people tend to leave their newsreaders running, to be restarted and reloaded. The only way to do that, short of rebooting the server, would be, you know, uh, well, and, oh, and rebooting the server would be overkill, is to simply use Unix's kill-all command to terminate those hundreds of forked processes all at once. Naturally, this nice command can often be put to nefarious use and... Mac OS's Schleyer malware uses kill all to kill the running script's terminal window after its bash script activity has been completed in a little bit of a kamikaze maneuver. And finally, the Mac's F unzip utility, fifth of the top five, is able to extract the contents of zip and gzip files directly to output from archives or other piped input. Schleyer also uses it with uh, with also with the head and tail commands to extract a malicious binary with a password. So, living off the land indeed. Uh, all of those very handy commands are right there on our systems, which saves the bad guys from needing to bring them with. And as I noted at the start, it's also far more stealthy to simply use what's already there. I'm going to have you Leo, stop for a you're moment. You're familiar with all of those. Yeah, oh yeah, and I have it all running all the time. By the way, I love your pronunciation. When you said SQLite, I thought, wait a minute. and Because uh, I've always said SQLite, but then I found an interview with the creator of it, and he says it's pronounced like the mineral, SQLite. 